Life Audio. Hello. Thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for us. I'm your host, Jennifer Slattery, and after this short word from our sponsor, we'll dive into today's Bible verse, 1 Samuel 18, 17. Often we believe our questions mean we don't have faith, but I believe Jesus loves our questions. Our questions are windows into heaven. I'm Caden Fabrizio, and on the Questions with Caden podcast, we ask and answer one question per episode as relevantly and biblically as possible. Questions about fear, anxiety, depression, addiction, and so much more. Don't worry. Your questions, they're not going to scare Jesus. So ask away. Listen and subscribe now at lifeaudio.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. You will fail. So what? Everybody does. But your gym, your watch, your yoga pants, they pretend you won't. So when you miss a day, eat the pancakes. Give up on a workout? You failed? Seriously, what the hell? We're Body. We've been a part of that too, but not anymore. At Body, we're rejecting perfection and embracing reality. Not in a Pizza Monday kind of way, in a loving your whole life kind of way. In a this workout is fun and it's okay if I take a week off kind of way. In an I'm eating healthy and it's okay if I indulge kind of way. In a I like myself no matter what kind of way. Yeah, you will fail. We all will. But we're not going to let that be the end. You see that? We're already making progress. So let's keep going. We are Body. Start your free trial at body.com. That's B O D I dot com. Today's Bible verse is 1 Samuel 18 17. Then Saul said to David, Here is my older daughter Merab. I will give her to you as a wife. Only be a valiant man for me and fight the Lord's battles. For Saul thought, My hand shall not be against him, but let the hand of the Philistines be against him. When a situation doesn't turn out as we hoped, when we expected a job promotion but got laid off instead, when we faithfully pursued a dream only to experience a series of setbacks or outright rejection, we have a choice. We can fight God or, in trust, we can comply with him. But we cannot force his hand or alter his plan. This truth initially frustrated me, but ultimately it gave me great peace years ago when, after a series of events, I felt certain I had lost my writing career. Now, if you've ever engaged in an activity that brought you soul deep joy and fulfillment, one that required decades of perseverance, you might understand how deeply this hurt. Initially, I tried to fight what felt like an inevitable outcome by working harder and longer, which killed the joy my writing, which I fought so hard to hold on to, gave me. Eventually, I realized and reminded myself, if God wanted me to continue as a writer, He would help me overcome every obstacle standing in my way, in his timing and his way. And if he didn't, there was no point exhausting myself, as doing so would only place me in direct opposition to God's plans, plans I knew and chose to believe would be good and deeply fulfilling, because my God is good. When we understand God's character and heart, it's easier to hold our most precious dreams and desires with open hands to grieve them when we need to, but then by God's strength and leading to know when to move on. Saul, the man discussed in today's verse, didn't understand this, although he'd initially experienced God personally in a powerful, kind, provisional, and unforgettable way. Although he had seen God fight on his behalf, he either didn't understand or forgot not only that God indeed was loving, faithful, and good, but that he always, always retained full control as well. Now, if you're familiar with biblical history, you might know some of Saul's story. He was the man out of all in Israel who God anointed to rule as the nation's first king, and God empowered him for that role. In 1 Samuel 10, the most prominent prophet of the time told him that immediately following Saul's anointing, this is starting in verse 6 and continuing to verse 7, then the spirit of the Lord will rush upon you and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. Now, when these signs meet you, 
Do what your hand finds to do, for God is with you. Do what your hand finds to do. In other words, walk in freedom. Why? Because God is with you. But then, a short time later, Saul disobeyed God and lost the kingdom. However, he continued to reign for another 10 years or so while God molded, trained, and strengthened David, the man divinely chosen as Saul's successor. And maybe in that long delay, Saul began to think he possessed more power than he did, that he could somehow force God's hand, that he could somehow alter God's plan. Initially, in a manipulative, conniving way, using his daughter, jealousy can cause us to behave in ugly ways, largely because it distances us from God and it gives the sin, the hurt, the deception within us room to grow. We can become so focused on what we don't have or what we fear we might lose. Our discontent and often sense of injustice can begin to overshadow, maybe even eclipse all of our blessings. In Saul's case, he still occupied the throne. God had, in essence, given him a 10 to 15 year extension on his reign when he could have dethroned him immediately. And God gave his army success against the Philistines, thereby helping the Israelites grow in freedom and in power. As a king, Saul should have been rejoicing, thanking God for sending a soldier like David to fight for the nation and therefore, by extension, for Saul. Instead, Saul's fears and insecurities and his failure to understand the power, the heart, and the character of God drove him to use his daughter to plot David's demise. And while David didn't end up marrying Merib, today's verse reveals Saul's heart. Nonetheless, It also marks a bit of a turning point where evil began to take root, to really grow in his soul. And Saul, not David, paid the price. Because as I said before, we can fight God or comply with him, but we cannot force his hand or alter his plan. I don't know about you, but I would rather stay on the side of victory. No matter how disappointed I might feel regarding a particular outcome or opportunity, I would much rather cooperate with God than fight against him. Because unlike Saul, I am not self-deceived enough to think that I could ever win were I to fight God. But even more than that, but even more than that, I've come to know him well enough to realize his victory is meant for me and for you as well. Because everything God does, everything he allows stems from his deep, relentless love for us. Let's pray. Holy Father, we are so grateful that you always retain full control, that you have the power to bring your plans to pass. We know that your power and your wisdom is rooted in your perfect love. You have such good plans for us. You are working on our behalf always, even in the middle of our disappointments, even when something feels like a deep loss. We know that you are leading us towards good. Remind us of your heart. Remind us of your character. Help us to follow after you moment by moment, day by day, especially when the road ahead feels uncertain or discouraging. We love you and we praise you. And it is in the name of your Son, our victorious Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. Your Daily Bible Verse is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Are you struggling to lose weight and keep it off? Tired of wasting time and money on starvation diets that lead to more frustration and stress? If there was a weight loss solution that could actually work for you, would you try it? Then head to Golo.com. I'm Steve. I lost 138 pounds in nine months on Golo. I'm Amber. I've lost 128 pounds with Golo taking release. If you're ready to take back control of your life, head to Golo.com now and see how Golo can work for you. That's G-O-L-O.com. My sleep is way better. My 
inflammation has gone way down. Golo saved my life. I was way overweight. That's what sent me down the path. I wanted to make sure and live for my kid. I have literally tried everything. I was on the verge of getting gastric bypass surgery, and I saw the Golo commercial, and it was the last thing I tried because it worked. Join over 2 million people who have found a better way to lose weight with Golo. Your healthier and happier life begins at golo.com. That's G-O-L-O.com. Again, G-O-L-O.com.